Groovy with the Evil Dead Rise now out as the fifth overall Evil Dead movie, it got me thinking about the Evil Dead video games. Movie games are never expected to be the best gaming experiences, nor are they usually seen as that great representations of the movies they are based on. Over the years, there have been a few games based on the Evil Dead franchise, and they've never really set the world on fire. A few years ago, that all changed with the release of the mobile phone game Army of Darkness Defense. Now, if you haven't heard of this game, it pains me to tell you that it has long since been removed from the App Store. The thing that pains me more about this is even if you bought the game back in the day when it was originally available, they don't let you re-download it today. This is a big sign of the huge issues with digital app stores and digital games for software. Fortunately, there are still ways to get and play the game. If you have Bluestacks Android emulator on your computer, there is at least one way to be able to continue playing this game, and hopefully that shouldn't go away. Of course, playing this game on PC isn't how the game was intended to be played, and it may seem a little bit repetitive and slow as a PC game. But, as the game was originally intended as a mobile phone game that you'd play for short bursts on a train or a flight, this game was awesome and very addictive. It is time to dig deep into Army of Darkness Defense, so everybody get ready, because this is my boomstick! Based on the third Evil Dead movie, Army of Darkness, the game sees you play as Ash as he has to stop the evil Deadites from capturing the Book of the Dead, the Necronomicon. The game only has one setting which is a castle area taken from the end of the game where all of the army of the dead are coming to take the book and Ash and a few knights are the only defense to try to stop them. Whilst you would expect the lack of variety to be an issue in a video game, it really isn't that big of a deal. A change to the visual look to the game may have been nice, but the point of the game is that you're defending the castle and the book from ever increasingly challenging waves of evil beings. Fun fact, the evil witch that appears towards the end of the game in the original film was played by the same actress that played Miss Honey in the original Matilda movie. I was shocked when I re-watched this recently and saw this. The gameplay is simple but it has a surprising amount of strategy as I will get into. When the game starts, you control Ash who can walk left and right, and you do this by holding the left or right side of the screen. Of course, if you're playing on blue stacks, you might be able to map these to a controller or your keyboard or whatever. So, as Ash gets within range of a deadite, he will automatically fire his shotgun at them. After earning enough coins, you can buy an upgrade to give Ash a metal fist. Then if you get very close, you will be able to punch them with the metal fist. Keep in mind that Ash's hand turned against him in the second film and he had to cut it off with a chainsaw. Later on, you'll be able to buy another upgrade to replace the metal gauntlet with that chainsaw, which is more powerful and gives you a little bit more distance when attacking the enemies. You have a life bar which slowly will refill, so if you are taking damage you can back away from the monsters to get some energy back. The problem with this is the monsters act a lot like the monsters from the film It Follows. And when I say It Follows, I don't mean the Evil Dead film which It Follows, I mean the film which is called It Follows. And in that film, much like the enemies from this game, the enemies will just keep walking towards you relentlessly unless something blocks their path. So here comes part of the strategy. How much do you fight the monsters from a short distance away and how much do you go in for the attack to slow their progress towards the book? Building your team is probably the biggest aspect of strategy in playing the game if you want to be successful. As the enemies get stronger and more plentiful, you'll quickly find they are too much for Ash, even if you have all of the upgrades to max out Ash and his shotgun 
and his chainsaw, etc, etc. The troops include various villagers, knights and archers who have different attacks to help keep the fight on the deadites. Other than calling for their arrival, these troops are completely computer controlled. They will walk up to the deadites and battle until either they are killed or kill the enemies themselves. Essentially, they work exactly like your enemies, but they're on your side, so isn't that nice? The further through the game you progress, the more troops and upgrades you can access and buy with the coins that you earn through playing the levels. You also have a blacksmith on your side, and in the game he acts as a meter for how often and how many troops you can call upon. I guess the logic is that he provides the weaponry the troops use to fight. So the more his meter fills up, the more troops you can call upon. You do have the option to let the blacksmith's meter fill up all the way and then you can upgrade the blacksmith himself and once done so you'll be able to call upon the troops at a faster rate. Part of the strategy here is do you call upon the fighting troops earlier or do you let the blacksmith be fully upgraded so that you can call upon more troops faster. Each of the types of troops you call upon use progressively more of the meter to call, so being able to fill up the meter faster means you can get more powerful enemies to come quicker. Everyone will have their own strategy, but for me I found the best combination is to focus on upgrading the weaker troops to overwhelm the enemies with quantities of pawns rather than just sending in a couple of knights and bishops. Not that any of the characters are actually bishops. You do have a wizard guy, or wise man. Anyway, eventually you'll have access to powerful weapons like the Death Coaster car, but this just rams the enemies and you don't get to drive it, which is a shame. The most useful upgrades are perhaps the castle itself, so you can add archers and like add traps like a pit that the enemies can fall in. There's a lot of stages and by the end you will face enemy kings and queens which are super hard to beat but if you've built up your troops and worked on the upgrades well enough it should be defeatable fairly easily. It's a shame that the game isn't available on the App Store anymore, but there are some other games which are in this same format. Believe it or not, the closest game which I found to be like this is one called Garfield Defense. Very imaginative with the title there. And whilst they do scratch the itch, they're not quite as good. Finding these may even be a little bit harder on some platforms though. So that's going to wrap it up for this review. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you do take the trouble to see if you can play Army of Darkness Defense on whatever device you're able to. If you have an old iPad laying around, you may be able to put it on there or you may find that you already had this back in the day and just haven't played it in a while. It's a good game and it's a game which I wish would get remade so you could still enjoy it. So anyway, if you haven't done so already, I would appreciate if you would smash that subscribe button on youtube.com forward slash at Geek Battle Gaming. Check out the written review of this same game at www.extremed.tv. And with that, until next time, stay safe, always stay extremed, and ciao for now. Boom! And I'm off the air. Boomstick! And I'm off the air, I should have said. Ah.